Thank you for joining us today. We have a special treat for you. We have an introduction to the Smarter Content Explorer. Joining us today, we have Rebecca Bauer. She is an educator from California. Thank you, Amy. Uh, this is Rebecca, and um, I'm happy to be here today. I am a consultant with the California Department of Education, uh, but I was in the classroom for 10 years before coming to the CDE. And I'm excited to share this tool because this is a tool I wish I would have had as an educator um, in the classroom. So this tool has been in development for the past year uh, with Smarter Balance and their member states. And they have done a user acceptance testing or UAT and provided feedback. And um, from that feedback is what you're seeing here. So this is the new web tool uh, and this is the home page. So I'll go over briefly what's offered here on the home page, and then we'll take a dive into the examples um, that filter by grade, subject, and claim. And so basically to give an overview of what this page contains is everything that you'll see in the Smarter Balance item specs and the content specs. So item specifications and content specifications. Um, and those are tools that are very, or documents that are housed on the smarterbalance.org site. Um, and they can be very lengthy and very technical and um, difficult to navigate through. So what this tool does is take that information and provide it in a very easy, uh, user-friendly format for educators um, to access and filter for applicable grade levels and content areas. So from this homepage, you can see the filter options right here. So if educa educators want to quickly dive in, they can do that. Um, but as mentioned before, I'm going to go over sort of the other features prior to filtering down content. Um, in the upper left-hand corner, this is the Smarter Content Explorer icon. And so that, from, that can be seen from any page. So you can go back to this home page by clicking on that link. There's also the Smarter Balanced icon, and um, you can click into there to go to the smarterbalance.org site, um, where a lot of these documents are housed um, that you'll see featured on this page. So we also have um, this menu bar up at the top for Explore, which will basically, click on that, um, pull up this, where you can filter, you can start exploring by searching by grade, and then content area, claim, and standard and target, but we won't do that quite yet because you can also do that from this um, explore spot right here on the right. So as I scroll down, you'll see the test development uh, menu bar, but you'll also see that, that you can access it here from the home page as well. Um, we'll dive in there. That'll show you where the blueprints are, accessibility guidelines, scoring rubrics, and as it says, much more, which you'll see in just a second. And as I scroll down, there are terms to know, which I'll show, and accessibility information and Q&A, which is great for um, different scenarios of how educators might use this tool um, back at their sites or in districts. And scrolling down, Smarter Balance also provides all these different resources right here on the left. Um, that you can click into and go straight to them from this um, home page as well. So I'm going to stop here at the test development um, section, which remember you can also get to from that um, navigation bar up on the right, the menu bar. So as I click the button, it'll take me to that page. And we have this nice uh, hover menu up at the top that will actually stay with you as you scroll down the page. Um, and these are what the page is separated into. So you have three different sections. The first one is test blueprints, where educators can learn about the summative blueprints. They have the ELA and math summative blueprints provided here, estimated testing times. What I love about it is if you click on any document within this entire site, it'll open up a PDF in a new window, because if you're like me, I tend to exit out when I'm done with the document, and then you'll lose the entire site that you're in. So this won't have that issue. You go back to the home page um, or whatever page that you're on. 
We also have the interim assessment um, description for the ICAs, IABs, and now the focused IABs. And then all the blueprints easily accessible here. And again, um, can be pulled up and downloaded into a PDF document. In addition, there is the interim assessment overview document, which is a great resource, uh, which is a new resource this year. Um, and this document has basically, like it says in the title, an overview of all the different interim assessments and also provides nice um, sheets that say which interim assessments are available by grade level, content area, et cetera. There are guidelines and resources. And so I know when I did item writing and review with Smarter Balanced, um, I, when you are actually creating, writing an item, you do access all of these different resources and Smarter did provide them all to us, but if I were to look for them on my own, I would have no idea where to go. So this is great to have all of these things um, provided here in easy, accessible format, such as uh, bias and sensitivity, sensitivity, because when you are writing items, you do want to be aware of all of these different things. Calculator for math items um, is also a very great feature as well to have right here. Um, the scoring guidelines are here for ELA full rights and short text math items as well as the different rubrics for each writing type. So they can easily access that without filtering through different content on the website. Um, also, we've added the vocabulary, which is something I like, especially for ELA. Um, I was an ELA teacher, but I'm sure it's wonderful for math as well. Uh, again, it'll open it up into a PDF document in a new window. And what's great about this is it has a lot of the different uh, words that students may see uh, on the assessments that teachers could access on one, one page per grade level. So for example, if I'm teaching third grade, uh, one common word I remember was um, central idea, and that could be easily confused with main idea, controlling impression. Um, it's listed many different ways throughout many different resources. So this way, teachers can start getting used to using those words in the classroom and when the students are confronted with it on the test, um, they'll be more aware of it and that won't uh, stop them from answering the question. So the more they can start using in the beginning of the, the instruction, the better. So as I click out of that, we also have the content specifications provided down below. And this provides an overview of the development of Smarter Balanced Assessments to ensure that they're covering the range of knowledge and skills in the Common Core State Standards. So you can pull those up. And again, all of these resources are resources that um, test developers use when developing tests and as well as the educators who work to design the items themselves. So it's great to have it in something that's easily accessible and all in one area as well. Um, the support link up top, again, will provide the three different sections um, that are organized throughout this page. And so that'll be in this hover bar up at the top. And the terms to know is great for educators who may not be aware of some of these more um, technical words that they'll see throughout these documents such as task models, um, stimuli, different depths of knowledge, which they probably have heard of, but different things that they may just want um, to refresh their memory on as well. As we scroll through, there's the accessibility information. Um, the UAAG is provided here and additional information. And then this is a great uh, Q&A section where educators can go to um, see about different scenarios. So what kind of information can one find in the Content Explorer? How might it be used, um, et cetera. So if I scroll back up to the top, I'm now going to dive in to explore. So remember, you can either do that through this Explore menu item up here on the top or go into the Smarter Content Explorer main page, which I'll do now. And since I was an ELA teacher, I'm going to use ELA as an example, but again, you can search for math um, as well. So I'll start by going to grade level six. 
selecting a subject. So I'm going to choose ELA. And then it prompts you to select a claim. And now I can filter by claim. And if a teacher is not quite familiar with what a claim is, there is a contextual icon uh, or help icon here, which will provide that information for both math and ELA. And these contextual help icons are also provided throughout uh, the search criteria. So that way it'll assist educators when filtering their options. So I'm going to click on claim four, just because research and inquiry does embed the different um, claims and we will have a lot of information uh, to look at with claim four. So again, we have the contextual help. Now I'm going to, if I'm not, this is one feature that actually um, made me really wish I had it back when I was in the classroom because I was more familiar with standards and not so much targets. So what this resource does is it helps bridge that gap between the language of test developers and the language that educators use in the classroom every day. So if I'm more comfortable with standards, I can click there. And I do remember the standards when I was an educator, so these may ring a bell to me. If I'm not quite sure, I can click on what is a standard and get the definition. And if I want to start bridging that gap and challenge myself to select a target, and I'm going to look at analyzing and integrating information because that's the focus of whatever unit we're doing and I click on two, it'll actually pull up the related standards. So then I can start bridging that gap and making those connections between the targets and the standards. So that might make me a little bit more comfortable when um, filtering these options. So as I have target two selected, I'll click on results and it will pull up this resource card and so I have all my uh, information that I've already clicked on and selected and I'll click on more. Here is my resource card with all my related standards and then my target information in detail is listed on the left side. Um, what's neat about this is it does list target two, three, and four so I can start seeing the progression um, there as well. So this is when we'll dive into all of that information that test developers and item writers, um, educators use. So this is another one of those hover bars so or static bars that will actually stay with us and tell us what the page is going to be organized into. And then, but this feature is really great where I will actually be able to dive into a sample test item that is related to the filtered options I've selected. So I'll do that now so an educator can quickly see without going to the sample item site and drilling down, it's already drilled down to that selection. And here is my sample item. Some have more, this one has one. So I'll pull that up and I can see the sample item really quickly right here. I can explain the hover text, which will give me the options. So again, this is just another way to let students become familiar with the types of items and um, how to how to answer them in the class. They could do it as a whole class activity or decide how they might want to use that. So I'll exit out of that, it's opened in a new window. And as I scroll down, you can see the first one is the standard. So all of these related standards for target two um, for research in grade six. I also have my depth of knowledge that is covered. So this one, because it's um, so comprehensive, it'll have the OKs two, three, and four. The evidence required, which is a great um, feature. And this is something that I always wanted to know, how will I know that my students have learned it? So these are two scenarios right here where my students will be able to provide evidence in these specific ways right here to analyze information, and integrate it without or with paraphrasing, avoiding plagiarism. Accessibility is also catered for the search. So you can see students with physical impairments may need these certain resources and students who are visually impaired may need these other types of resources. So this is another great uh, resource 
available at your fingertips, the more we'll take you back to the UAAG and other resources related to accessibility. Stimuli is also um, important. So if a teacher wants to select an additional text um, that's not provided, um, they can actually find a text and then cater it to uh, the requirements for this level. Um, they do provide examples down here, like a diary entry um, and how many words it should be and so forth. As we scroll down, task models are something I wish I would have seen back when I was an educator. There are four listed here, so you can go in and actually find out um, what item stems are something that I like to look at, how they come up with distractors, rationales, etc. So, for example, the item stems for this task model are listed here. If you're going to choose different resources, they'll give you examples of two sources need to be on the same topic or a historical primary and secondary one on the same topic, um, etc. This is an item stem, so they can start using this item stem when um, address or asking questions to their students in the classroom so that way their students are getting familiar with those types of questions and how they are asked and so we basically went through all of those but again this one has several task models you can look at with the different item stems down here that they can practice within the classroom and as we scroll back up to the top that one has a lot. Some of them don't have quite that much information. But then you're back here on the home page. If you also want to do a quick search, you can click in the search section here. They have the example of fractions or maybe theme. You can quickly search um, different information that will be pulled up for and the different standards that are here and dive back into that content for any um, keyword search that you choose. So we'll go back to the home page, and that's basically an overview of this web tool. Again, um, it is available and it was released September 18th, and so it's a great resource that I recommend you use with all of your educators. Thank you.